It's called Under the Shadow of the Almighty. Um, the Lord led me back to a message he had given me some years back. And, you know, I just felt that it still had a lot of relevance even today. And so um, we will want to just go into that word right now. Father, I ask, O oh God, that indeed let this word speak into the hearts of every one who hears it in the name of Jesus. Let it bring hope, O oh God. Minister protection, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your name be glorified. We thank you, Father, and we worship you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, my text is taken from, uh, it's a text that everyone is running back to at this time, Psalm 91, verse 1 to 16. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's just something that we all need to embrace at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. And our text simply says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that works in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, and that really is a good prayer for us to keep in mind in this season. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's a prayer that speaks about God's protection. Amen. Amen. And I believe like never before, the entire world needs the protection that can only come from God. You know, it, it's um, this crisis that has been all over the world, it doesn't know any race. It doesn't know any status. It, it touches everyone, the rich, the poor. The black, the white, the yellow, everyone. But we can rest assured that even in the midst of all this, this too shall pass. In the name of Jesus. I said, this too shall pass. In the name of Jesus. Now this scripture starts in verse 1. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. We all want to be under the shadow of the Almighty. But that scripture tells us clearly the first qualification is to dwell. To dwell in the sacred place of the Most High. Amen. Um, to dwell in is different from visitation. Amen. Uh, we may visit a physical church building or we may visit a church online, amen, like some of you are doing now. 
and that's a visitation. Um, dwelling is a whole different thing. Dwelling talks about, you know, um, from dictionary.com it says to leave or stay as a permanent residence to reside. Amen. And so what that scripture is saying is God is sending out a promise to those who will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Those who will reside constantly in His presence. Those who will be forever sensitive to the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. He who dwells, he who resides in the secret place of the Most High. Not he who visits. Amen. God does not want visitations. He wants dwelling. Amen. He wants us and him to abide together continually. And my prayer is that in this season, while we're stuck at home, we will embrace that relationship with the Almighty God like never before in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We know that under the New Testament dispensation of the word of God tells us that the, the spirit of God indwells us the, as believers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But, you know, even though the spirit of God indwells us, it's a different thing to be constantly aware of his presence and ever sensitive to what he is saying. Hallelujah. You know, um, one of the things you quickly learn in this season of quarantine is that it is easy to reside in the same house and not really connect together. If you, especially if you're spending more time connecting with people on uh, Twitter and Facebook and all those things, amen. So we, we, we want to understand that it is not about just living, like the Holy Spirit lives inside us. But it's a different thing to give attention to the Holy Spirit, amen. To be aware that he's constantly indwelling us. To be aware that he's constantly speaking to us, directing us, amen, hallelujah. And so I pray that like never before in this season, we will get in tune with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, amen. And that tells me there is a secret place of the Most High, amen. And what is a secret place, amen. A secret place is not just something that is easy to find, or easily accessible, otherwise it will not be a secret. Hallelujah. Secrets are things that need to be sought out. Amen. It means that it's not just something you find by the side of the road. It is something you are deliberate about. And so God is saying, he that is deliberate about seeking my presence, he that is deliberate about being in tune with me, shall abide. Under the shadow of the most high God. Amen. Amen. I, I know and I'm thankful like never before that even in this season, more people are seeking God. But God is looking for people who will dwell. Not just when there's trouble in the land. Hallelujah. My prayers even after all this is done. The relationships we have built with the Almighty God, we will sustain it, even in the good times in the name of Jesus. That we will not be people that are just drawn to the Lord in times of trouble. Amen. God seeks those who will constantly seek Him. Amen. Those who will constantly seek His face. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we go to um, Luke 11, verse 9 to 10. It says, So I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, 
And he who seeks find, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Amen. God is looking for those who will look for him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if it takes trouble to seek him, then please seek him. Like never before, we need to seek him in this time. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Hallelujah. But God it wants us to seek him constantly. Not just in times of trouble. But you know, I uh, also recognize that many times it takes trouble for us to begin to seek the Lord. Amen. I personally, I know I didn't really seek a relationship with the Lord till I came into a crisis um, some years back. Uh, I was a young man who felt, man, invincible, felt, man, nothing could go wrong with me. And one day I collapsed in my house. Uh, they said I had high blood pressure and I didn't think that was possible. And um, in that period, I was forced to stay at home. <laughs> so I entered my own season of quarantine that's some years back. And uh, in that season of quarantine, of just staying away at home, I realized that I needed to know more about God. I went to a bookshop and I bought a book on prayer. And I probably bought also the first Bible I will buy outside of uh, doing religious studies back in school. And I began to study the word. Of God and seek the face of the God of the Lord, and that is how I met with God. I met with Jesus. I surrendered my life quietly in my room. Amen. So I'm just saying a word to someone out there. This is also a time to seek the Lord like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. And notice that word says that He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's so interesting that um, we may look at a shadow and say, oh, it's not the real person. But the shadow tells us something about the real person. Amen. Amen. It tells us the same thing that Wherever the shadow is, the real person is. Amen. What do I mean? Um, right now, I'm residing in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, well, churches in Durham, North Carolina. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I woke up this morning and I drove down to Durham, North Carolina to do this broadcast. Amen. And I brought my shadow with me. Do you understand what I'm saying? My shadow did not stay in Raleigh. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and so what I'm trying to say to us is when it talks about the shadow of the Almighty God, it's saying that wherever the shadow of the Almighty God is, God himself is there. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it tells us, it says, hey, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Also, a shadow also gives shade. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A presence casts a shadow. A shadow is an inseparable companion. Amen. Um, the Amplified puts that scripture this way, Psalm 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. And I repeat that again. Under the shadow of the Almighty God, whose power no foe, no coronavirus can withstand in the name of Jesus. But notice what the Amplified says. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable. Stable. We need stability like never before. Not going crazy. Not losing it. Because of all that is happening around us. 
the calm assurance that we know whom we serve must and shall distinguish us in this season as children of the almighty God. It does not mean that these things are not touching us, but our response is different. Amen. Amen. Because we know whom we serve and whose we are. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, shall remain stable, fixed. To be fixed means unshakable, unmovable by circumstances around us. Amen. And, and that's what God wants us to be. That's where God wants us to be. We're, we're not moved by the things happening around us. Remember Peter, as long as he had his eyes stayed on the Lord, he could work on water, even in the middle of a storm. Hallelujah. But the moment he took his eyes off the Lord and he looked at those storms, looked at the waves, looked at the winds, he began to see. Word of God tells us says he will keep in perfect peace those who have their eyes stayed on him. And so in, even in this season, we will have our eyes stayed on the almighty God and not on MSNBC, not on Fox News, not on CNN, amen, not on social media. It says he will keep in perfect peace those who have their eyes stayed on him. Hallelujah. Verse 2. says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, on whom I learn and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. Hallelujah. Notice that that scripture starts by saying, I will say. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. God, you are my refuge. God, you are my fortress. Lord, I trust in you. I lean and rely upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, I will say. It doesn't say, I will think it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't say, I will assume it. It says, I will say. We must declare some things in this season. It says, the power of life and death are in the tongue. You shall declare a thing and it shall be established. If you're going to declare anything, declare over yourself. I will say of the Lord. You are my refuge. You are my fortress. I rely on you, oh God. I confidently trust in you, oh God. Because you will keep me. You will keep all that concerns me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There must be a declaration before the things that follow take place. Amen. It's not enough to say, oh, I thought it in my heart. No, he says, I will say. And so say it. Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. Say it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run. And they say, you can't just think the name of Jesus in your heart. Amen. You must declare it. Jesus. I run to you, God. Because you're my refuge. You're my fortress. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 46, verse 1 to 5 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters row and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose strength shall make glad the sea of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. Hallelujah. 
a very present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. Since God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. She shall not be moved. Amen. The King James says of that Psalm 46 verse 5, because it's very important for us to keep this in mind. It says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. Amen. God will help you and I right early. God is always on time. He's never late, amen. And I saw I say a word of encouragement to you that are listening and watching that God will help you amen. on time in the name of Jesus. God will not send you late help. He's an on time God and he will help you right early in the name of Jesus. Our God is never late, amen. It says the vision is for an appointed time. It says, even though it tarries, it says, wait for it, for it shall not tarry. It shall surely come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Proverbs 18 and verse 10 says, The name of the Lord, I already said this earlier, is a strong tower. The righteous run it, and they're safe. Amen. Psalm 27, verse 5. Says for in the time of trouble, and these are times of trouble. It says he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And I can assure you, brethren, that when the Lord hides you, no one can find you. Amen. When the Lord hides us. Coronavirus will not find us in the name of Jesus. When the Lord hides us, no evil shall find us in the name of Jesus. And so these are times of trouble. There are also times for us to shout unto the Lord that, Lord, hide me. Hide my family, oh God. Hide my loved ones, oh God. Hide my colleagues. Hide my neighbors, oh God. In your secret place, oh God. Father, hide all that concerns me. Hide all that are connected to me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I want us to understand something because it's easy to read Psalm 91 and think that, oh, it's just talking about us, the believers, that, you know, we don't have anything to worry about. No. God is calling us to show to the world that God is our refuge and he's our fortress. And then invite them into the very same relationship with the almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. But God has an assignment for his church. He has an assignment for every believer at this time like never before. Amen. God. The almighty God wants to bring deliverance to those around us that do not even know him or acknowledge him. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm going to read the scripture from Job 22 and verse 30. Job 22 and verse 30 says, He will even deliver one who is not innocent. Yes, he will be delivered by the purity of your hand. Amen. The Amplified um, puts it this way. It says, He will even deliver the one for whom you intercede, who is not innocent. Yes, he will be delivered through the cleanness of your hands. Amen. And I hope you understand what talking about cleanness of our hands is not about, you know, and we must wash our hands in this season, amen. We must use our hand sanitizers, amen. It's just simply saying that whatever the works of our hands, they are pure before God, amen. 
when we work in holiness, when we work in purity, those are words that ch the church doesn't want to mention anymore. But God is saying when we walk in holiness, when we work in purity, he says then we can intercede for those who are guilty. It's like those who are not innocent. It means that those who rightfully deserve a judgment of some kind, a punishment of some kind. But God says, you the church, you the believer, you can intercede for them and he will surely deliver. Amen. Hallelujah. So church, God has given you and I an assignment in this season. And that assignment is to intercede for the rest of the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, when we intercede, it says, for even those who are not innocent, they shall be delivered. Amen. What I'm saying is, there are those around you that need the salvation of the Almighty God. And it starts from that place of intercession. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, remember I started off by saying that in that verse it says, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress. Amen. Amen. So after we've made that declaration, then God begins to and when we declare and acknowledge that God is our refuge and our fortress, then the Amplified puts said to this and says, then God will begin to do what only he can do. Amen. And, and so we read in that verse 3 to 4, the Amplified, it says, for then he will deliver you from the snare of the fire and the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions, and on his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, after you have declared, after you have said, Lord, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, say, then, hallelujah, God begins a work of deliverance. Then, God begins a work of protection, of covering us. Amen. God will deliver and he will cover us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know, um, and the picture that I always, the, the Lord always gives me when I read the scripture is a picture of a mother hen. Um, a mother hen simply, um, when it has chicks, is very protective of its chicks, the young ones. And so you find out that the mother hen is constantly looking in the skies to see if there's danger around. And at the slightest sign of danger, that mother hen spreads out her wings and expects the chicks, the young ones, to just come under those wings. That's what it, that's what was wrong. We say, you know, we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. When God sends us an invitation to come under his wings. Amen. Hallelujah. It's to come to the place of protection. And, and, and that mean just like the the cheeks, the, the, the young of the mother hen are not aware of the danger. Perhaps a hawk is about to swoop down and snatch them, but the mother hen creates an image that is bigger than those cheeks. It covers them to protect them. Amen. Thank God that there is no one bigger than our God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God expects us to come under his protection, his cover. And he's told us how. It says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. There's a need to dwell with God in his secret place. 
And then and there must be saying, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And you know, many years ago, the Lord gave me an illustration of this. Um, uh, we had just had one of our young ones had just been born, uh, was not just born, but was growing, was still like a toddler. I wasn't a toddler yet, but um, I, I remember that um, this young baby, one of my daughters, was on the bed, and um, all night I kept pulling the blanket to cover this child because I felt the room was too cold and they might catch a cold. And without waking up, she would lift her legs and pam, 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 kick in the air and kick the blanket off. And I would pull that blanket gently over. And I kept doing that all night. And I tell you, I didn't sleep much that night. I woke up in the morning very frustrated and saying to myself that if only this child would know I'm trying to help her. And God said to me, yeah, you can't get frustrated. I don't get frustrated. Amen. 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 God began to give me an illustration that just like the mother had, there are times it's chasing me, it's chasing you and I to put us on his wings, but something then just attracts us, something catches our eye, and we run out from under the wing of his protection, and God swoops again to try and protect us. And he's constantly trying to bring us under his wings, under the shadow of the Almighty God. You know, I, I, I learned something some years back. You know, there are times you go through crisis and you say, oh God, where were you? And I quickly learned that, you know, if God has shown me everything he had delivered me from, I probably will be afraid to even step out in the morning. And that's the beauty of our God. He saves us, He delivers us, He protects us from even unknown danger. Hallelujah. Some of you watching me, maybe you say, no, oh, yeah, well, well, some people are like, yeah, you may never even know if God has already protected you from coronavirus. You don't know. Maybe that's why you're standing. <laughs> that's why you're still watching today. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, I, I look at some of the things I contacted in this season, and I can tell you, if I, <laughs> it's just by his grace. I look at some of the symptoms I had some months back when nobody was talking coronavirus, and I can say, hmm, doctors told me they didn't know what this was, but mm, I just know that, you know, I don't need to know the name. Hallelujah. I just need to know the name of the one who will save and deliver me. Amen. The name of the Lord. The name of Jesus. A strong tower. The righteous running. And they are safe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Passion Bible, I'm reading Psalm 91, verse 9 to 10. It says, when we leave our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, it says, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us? or disease infect us. Hallelujah. And that's a word you and I need to hold on to in this season, like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. It says if we dwell in the sacred place of the Most High, and we sh he shields us from harm, and it says how can evil prevail against us, or disease infect us? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so we must pray. If 
Father, help us to seek you. Help, help us to constantly dwell in your presence. Help us, O oh God, to manifest your presence. Make us carriers of your glory. Intercess us that even those who are innocent will be delivered. In the name of Jesus. We're going to pray. But before we pray, we're going to pray those prayers I just said now. But before that, I want to say a few things to us. Um, I read a story about the uh, miraculous protection of of a Hutu uh, preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I read the miraculous protection of this Hutu preacher. And um, I want to share about this. Um, tribal wars and nothing new in Central Africa. And uh, you know, there was a time that there was a war between the Hutus and the Tutsi tribes, two tribes in Central um, Africa. There was a, the, the, the fight or the war spilled over the boundaries of eight African countries. Atrocities being committed on both sides. And in one case, and this is a story I want us to always pay attention to. In a Christian village in the Congo, Tutsi soldiers broke down the door of a young Hutu preacher's house and stood poised to slaughter the entire family. And the preacher begged and told them, wait, allow us a moment to pray before we die. The request was angrily granted and the family knelt to pray. But the expected shots never came, hallelujah. After praying, the family slowly stood up and discovered that the soldiers were gone. Not only out of their house, but out of the village too. Several months later, as the young preacher was telling this story to a church meeting in a nearby, nearby town, he heard a voice from the back saying, I can tell you what happened. This was one of the Tutsi soldiers that had come to the village to try to kill him. He said, I was one of those who broke into your house. He said, I had your children in my sights as you knelt and prayed. And suddenly a tremendous wall of fire surrounded you. We couldn't even see beyond the flames. And we knew the house would burn down with you in it. So we got out. Then when we were outside and saw your house engulfed in flames, and yet not being destroyed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says we fled out of your village as well. We realized that this was not a kind of fire we are familiar with. But a fire sent by God. And if this is how your God responds. I want to know him too. I'm tired of fighting and killing. And that is why I came tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That is a true story. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to pray. Before we pray, I want to say a few things. The scripture will not be on the screen, but I will read it. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 it says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope amen I don't know who you are out there but this is what the Lord is saying to you amen it says his thoughts for you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Amen. You may not even know him yet, but well, it's a good time to know him. Amen. Amen. And my prayer is that if 
even in those times when we do not really have an understanding of what's going on around us, we will draw unto him that knows the end from the beginning. The Alpha and the Omega. The one who says he's our refuge and our fortress. The one who can speak peace to the storms of life. And they will be still. And so I throw out an invitation to you out there who may not know the Lord yet. This is a time like never before to draw unto him. And to you who are out there and you know you're backslidden, this is a time like never before to get right with God. Amen. And so I want to encourage you to surrender your life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. By strength shall no man prevail. None of us have the answers. But God has the answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And to others who are at home, I want to also say something to you in this season. That God is even in this time of quarantine releasing creativity from heaven to earth. Amen. Amen. There is a blueprint for you in heaven. And you need to bring it down on earth. You know, I always love to talk about Noah, a man who had no degree in shipbuilding, a man who had never built a ship before. All he had was a word from God, a blueprint from the Almighty God. God told him, gave him clear instructions. This is how you're going to build this ship. This are the dimensions. This is the wood you're going to use. This is the tie you're going to use. And he followed those instructions to a letter. Build a ship on, on dry ground, a ship that was never tested. There was no, um, what they call it, there was no uh, model, <laughs> amen. He didn't know how to build a small model first to see if it will float, amen. Because you see, when you hear from God, we are not just trying stuff, amen. God does not call us to try and see if something works. If God tells you to do something, it will surely work. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. So I, I'm praying for someone now under the sound of my voice that God will open your eyes to see the blueprint that is placing in your hands. In the name of Jesus, God has set you up right now as a problem solver, a solution maker in the name of Jesus. Of course, you will be blessed too with what God puts in your hand. But most of all, he wants you to receive that blueprint from heaven now in the name of Jesus. And I pray now that the Lord will open your eyes to see that you will see that indeed in this season, when you're sitting back at home, God is actually opening your eyes to see what your future will be. It's placing something in your hand that will solve a problem. It's placing something in your hand that will be a solution to the world. And it's placing something in your hand that will be a blessing to you and generations to come in the name of Jesus. I make bold to say that this is indeed a season of creativity. Uh, when you look at the, the speed with which they are now developing all manner of tests and the period for testing is getting shorter and shorter. There are now more solutions to fighting the coronavirus because God is releasing a spirit of creativity over the land in the name of Jesus. And so I want to say to someone, don't take your eyes off God. Amen. Because there is a God opportunity Hallelujah. before you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The word of God says creation waits for the manifestations of the sons and the daughters of God. Amen. Amen. Creation is waiting for you. 
to connect with the blueprint from heaven and solve the problems of this world in the name of Jesus. Creation waits for the sons and daughters of God to manifest the power of God in this season in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And right now we're going to pray. I'm, I'm going to pray that God will release a spirit of intercession over all the land now in the name of Jesus that God will release a spirit of intercession over the land that churches believers will arise and we will begin to intercede for those around us the Bible says that even for those who are not innocent he says he will deliver them in the name of Jesus. Church, and especially the believers, I'm saying to you now, you can't spend this season just praying about yourself and your family. Amen. And it says, when you intercede, even the one who is not innocent shall be delivered. Amen. And if you want to look at a, a good example of that, Job, having gone through all he went through, what was the turnaround point in the situation when God told him, okay, pray for those who have been critical of you. Pray for those who have been speaking so many bad things of you. And as Job did that, God turned around his captivity. Amen. And, and, and so I'm just speaking to the church of God. I believe this is a message for the believer at this time. Amen. It's time to take our eyes off the things that we alone are going through and begin to intercede for the rest of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we pray, Father, Lord, help us. As we said earlier, help us to seek you, O God. Help us, O oh God, to be people that constantly seek your face, O oh God. Not just for ourselves, not just for our businesses, O oh God. But on behalf of our colleagues at work, O oh God. On behalf of our neighbors, O oh God. On behalf of the politicians, O oh God. On, on behalf of those in authority, O oh God. Father, Lord, release your spirit of intercession over the nation, O oh God. Father, Lord, that in the quiet moments of the moment, you will scare us up. By your spirit to get up and pray in the name of Jesus. Rikatana mom shaniya nakaye. Reina kataye mobutangi minigida. Father, help us, O God, to be people who constantly dwell in your presence, who constantly seek your face, O God. And because we dwell in your presence, O God, help us to manifest your power and your glory to a world that is hurting out there in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, make us careers of your glory. Yes, make us intercessors, oh God. Hallelujah. And even those who are not innocent will be delivered in the name of Jesus. And I want to speak to those who are Christians, who are health workers, as a time like never before to also rely on the power of God. What I'm saying to you is simply before you go to work, pray. <laughs> Amen. Make sure you pray, not just praying for protection from all this, but pray that, Lord, use me today. Use me to minister to someone who's hopeless. Use me, oh God. I, and, and, you know, it's a time like never before for all of us to say, Lord, we put the hands of every health worker into your hands, oh God. Now, Father, you will use their hands, oh God, to do good. You will use them beyond their abilities, O oh God. You will use them beyond their knowledge, O oh God. You will use them beyond their intellect, O oh God. Let your supernatural power be released, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your name be glorified, O oh God. Let your name be glorified, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak your protection over all the land, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. We speak your protection, O oh God, over all those, over the, 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 the police officers, O oh God, the health workers, O oh God, the trash collectors, even the postmen, O oh God. 
All those that are essential service now, oh God, Father, we speak your hand of protection over them. The Lord, you will bring them back home safely. In the name of Jesus. Father, we also bring before you the sacrifice. The sacrifice, oh God, of all those who are working, who are essential jobs that have to work in this season. We bring the sacrifice of their families before you. And we say, Lord, may they not weep over their families. May their families not weep over them in the name of Jesus. And Father, bless their families even because of this sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we worship you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, right away, I'm going to turn this service over to um, Pastor Jackie. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, she'll close us in prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was totally blessed this, uh, uh, at this service. Amen. Amen. I am uh, so grateful. I know we had amazing testimonies when the Lord sent this word to us in those days. In Lagos, uh, there were robbers prowling everywhere and, uh, you know, uh, people that attended that service were protected and those who didn't come when they visited a particular family, they trust someone. And so I just know that there is protection for us, amen. I just want to ask that we'll give an offering online. Um, we can go to Jesus, um, dollar sign, Jesus City Church. It's um, um, Cash App. We have Google Pay as well. And uh, we can go on the website. And we want to give a, an offering and thank God for his divine protection. Father, we just want to thank you. Yes, we want to be thoughtful with what we want to give you. Because, you know, when we give you, we get your um, covering. Even to uh, the extent of what we believe. Our giving is a token of our belief in you. Our giving is a token of a trust we have in you. If we trust you, that when we put this in your hand concerning um, this period, that it will go a mile and that you will attract your favor. We don't need our money, but the Bible says when we give, we will receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men pour into our bosom. And so we the things that are so uncertain in some cases. We know that we who believe God, when we give, God will open a door. He is going to release a blessing. We want to ask for you to give your tithes as well. You know what the Bible says about tithing. And so uh, when we give tithes, the Bible says he will open a window of heaven and pour a blessing upon us that we can uh, contain. And so there are so many ideas, and he's going to give us more ideas to bring resources, unexpected resources to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless everyone that is given and who will give. I bless them with your word that you said you bless and you give us more than we ask for. We thank you, God, that doors will open that we didn't seek for. Father, we thank you because they will open in seven ways to us yes. for our benefit. We thank you, Lord, O oh God Almighty, because you will not forget our labor of love and this token that we bring before you. Thank you, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. I just want to um, end the service. I just want to pray for those who... Uh, in the uh, medical profession. You know, it used to be the place everybody wanted to go to work uh, because they made money and it was quick money and everyone was 
doing healthcare, even though you could tell that it's not everyone that is cut out for the level of compassion or the attention needed to take care of sick, the sick. But now God is testing our heart because you see, um, the Bible says that the thief goes and uh, runs away when the thief comes, the, the bad shepherd or the shepherd that is not the right one wants to run away. But the right shepherd, the good shepherd Jesus, he doesn't run away. Mm -hmm. And so those, he's checking our hearts and especially those who are Christians who are in the medical profession that you have to come to terms with your heart that I want to serve no matter what. Is a test, is the cost of the hour. You're being tested. Father, I pray that you cause us to excel at this time in Jesus' name. I pray that you bring compassion, a spirit of mercy and compassion, a spirit of sacrifice and love to everyone in the medical field, those that are frontliners to this situation, that you, God of heaven, will touch their heart to serve so that you want them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we're praying that you will reward them in Jesus' name. Yes, I remember being in the hospital during uh, when Odelia was ill and she passed away. And I know how important it is to have the right medical people around you. You seem to feel better. Father, I pray that you will touch the medical practitioners you are exposing their hearts now that you will cause them to embrace their assignment even right now and i know that you will protect them like mother theresa mother theresa is living among lepers she's lived with them for years she doesn't have leprosy so there is a protection that god gives us when we serve him when we do things out of compassion out of love out of help for the helpless in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, we thank you because we trust you for that protection that will come of Paladi Kataka. Rekopo Karakata. Rando Kapakata. Maraka Pakata. You may told those doctors that have passed away that this is it. They will know that this is it. So we have to be prepared to embrace whatever God has for us. But I know that if you protect them, Mother says, He will protect you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to pray for those that are in mourning, that will comfort them, that you will comfort those that are in mourning, that you will wake them up to comfort in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that they will seek out help, they will not abide alone, that they will not be left without help, that they will seek out support, their support system, and that God, you raise one support system to help those who are in mourning, yes, that need comfort. Yes, the Bible says that you will grant them comfort. Yes, he puts it in a beautiful way. You will give them beauty for ashes. Yes, that is who you are. I tell you, when people are in that state, that's the last thing they're thinking of. But this is what God is thinking. He says, to appoint unto them the morning Zion, to give unto them a garland of ashes, garland for ashes, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, that the planting of Jehovah, that he may be glorified. And so God, in your own way, you will put this upon every one morning in the entire universe, right now, in the name of Jesus, in, in this world right now, that you will comfort them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we want to bless even the police um, workers, the staff that have to go out, the EMS. Father, we bless your people. We bless our land yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the things that God will have me tell us before I close is that whatever we declare is what we're going to get. Amen. The Bible 
is clear. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the Bible says, we call the things that be not as though they are. That's God. And so we cannot be pronouncing anything that increases this virus. To call it the name that it is used to describe it, something damning, you are a believer. Make a point of duty to not mention that word to relate to this situation Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. When you say that you are increasing it, you are magnifying it, and you are making it more than God, you cannot, we will not yield to this Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, Father, I ask that you take hold of our tongue, yes, of us, and change our speech yes, to begin to declare and confess yes, that Lord. this virus lacks power, yes, it lacks Lord. authority, yes, it Lord. is yes. finished, it cannot grow, it will not yes. prosper, yes. it ends yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare to this virus, you will not no longer kill in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare to you virus. Hear the word of the Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, the great I am, the supreme deity, the God of the, of, of the whole earth, our majesty. Mando Kapalizitombi Elohim, Gaskatozi Galigo, Brando Zikanda, the one that gave Jesus to pay with his life, with his blood, to purchase us salvation. Blogaska, the one that kills and makes alive. Ligaposikapolia, the authority of all authority. The power that surpasses all power. Libosoto, the almighty God. Lagato Kazata, address you virus. In the name of Jesus, lose your power, lose your steam. Be decimated, be obliterated yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be a thing of the past yes. that you have no power. You are now avoided right now in the name of Jesus. Any other thing that enforces you, that makes you grow, we cut it down in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. You cannot steal our social life, Hallelujah. our education, mm. put us in quarantine. In the name of Jesus, enough is enough. Yes. We put the boundary of the blood of Jesus yes. against you. I need to see for the earth, for the world right now and say, you find us. You end your sting is over in the name of Jesus. Marapos Kaliba. Maraka, you cannot go through the blood of Jesus. You can go through the most high God. In the name of Jesus Christ. La Praka Tona La Grata. Kondo Atai Taka. Palando Sopa. Eiga Do Soka. Lose your grief. Lose your grief. You need to love him. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to embrace the word of God. You need to see. 
seeking. You say, Jesus, I want to know you more. Renew yourself to me. Who are you in this God Almighty? He doesn't mind if you talk to him that way. He will renew himself to you. Rando Marabando it will turn around for yes, our good. Yes. So for some reason, our God, the Almighty, will cause this situation to turn around for our good. Yes, yes, Glory be to God! Yes, Hallelujah! Yes, God. Father, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. La Rabaka Zobra Kata. Marata Baraka Zinto Kata. Marabanda Zinto Rama. In the name of Jesus, Anywhere that you have appeared to be like a mountain, insurmountable, virus, you become a plain. You are, I address you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Become a plain. Become a more hill. Become nothing in the name of Jesus. In the hearts of people, become nothing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for divine speed, God's speed. Anything that requires quick attention, approved by heaven, let it receive speed. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we bless your name. Oh God Almighty, we thank you for our community, Jesus City Church, our community, Durham, our community, the whole world, our online community, Facebook, and YouTube, and the, you know, the internet world, wherever we are, our platforms, we want you to know that you're blessed, you're covered, Amen. that you will testify that all things work together for Amen. good. Yes. For those who love God and yes. are called according to his purpose. Amen. And that you're under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. You will dwell in the secret place. You're going to know God more, know your family more. Yes. No more. You have more time in your hands to grow that God's blessing is apparent. It will be apparent Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we're going to share the grace and fellowship. So we'll take it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, where you will be immune. You are immune in there. Have a great week, somehow. Have a great week. Make sure you laugh a lot, enjoy something. With some time with your family, your loved ones, God bless you. Bye-bye.